Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, uh, we reached the end of July. We'll be going into August uh, now. Uh, this has been a little hot stretch here we had, but uh, the, the things are still looking good for August. Uh, we had some great news, great news. The Yaspreys, chicks that I originally thought I, we lost mysteriously, were not lost at all. They were part of a relocation plan to help uh, strengthen the Osprey population in Michigan. 14 of them left the marsh, so the nest of that had two to the left, uh, three to the left, ended up only having uh, one staying here, two went up north, mines, one went up north, uh, the other one. So it's just been great, great news on that. And uh, this area here, the conservation of Ospreys, has, is just unbelievable how they reestablished uh, the, the Ospreys here in uh, this part of Massachusetts. It's just it's one of the better things in life as far as uh, what we humans have done, that's for sure. Uh, so that's where we're at. I went to two different locations. It would have worked a little bit better for me if Saturday I would have went to where I went Sunday, and Sunday I would have been where I was Saturday. But that's the tricky part uh, because you can't get from A, B, B to C in different areas in the marsh you can't because it'll the cutouts and the drainage and my limited mobility of that i am right now so uh certainly uh some great sightings a really nice really surprise in the woods on the way back uh uh of a black and white wobbler and that really made me happy i did capture that uh first time i actually tried to do video on a black and white wobbler and anybody that knows wobblers they don't stand still so uh very quick moving little birds and uh very fun to follow anyhow thanks again for tuning in if you like it like it if you ring the bell ring the bell subscribe whatever it's called i have no idea anymore but i am going to tell you this i'm so excited the way uh this is turning out uh this is really the way i wanted it to be when i've always been out in the wild i wanted to be able to share this wheel for with the chance for the people that just don't get it to get out there and uh hopefully this is working you know if it is for you please give me a little thumbs up or whatever you do i don't know how it works out a little comment i i'm very uh, sociable as you can see so thanks again and uh here we'll start uh off with uh saturday's encounters and move right into sundays saturday started out with some rain uh and uh, got lucky enough, I was sitting in the parking lot and uh, killed their plover, which is the first time I think we've shown them. Uh, here's what I, the difference I've been trying to do. Uh, you know, regularly, you know, I used to just shoot a still, put it up there. People go, oh, nice picture, da, da, da. But I think if I can incorporate the video and keep incorporating some of the video like this right now, I think it brings you more into the woods with me or into the marsh with me or into the field with me or on the river, wherever I'm heading. I think, you know, it's a lot tougher to shoot video. I'm shooting with a Nikon D780. Uh, that is the camera of right now that I shoot my video with. Most of my photos are with my D500, but I also do use the D780 too. So, uh, uh, that's... This is shot in slow mo, of course, because I, I'm using a monopod. You can handheld a little bit. I can't handheld the lens I got this week, but next week I get my 500 millimeter back, which is a very light 500 millimeter, and uh, it will, should allow me a little more flexibility. Nice Easter garden snake again in the woods. Oh God, I love my snakes. I love my frogs. I love my snakes. I love my turtles. Uh, I love the world. Yes, I do. Uh, here's a doe. Now, this is another pot. Okay, so you see, oh, nice doe. You see it in the marsh, and it is. I mean, sometimes a picture tells more than than a video can. I doubt it. I I mean, it does, actually. I mean, you see the freeze when you ca capture something that uh, a still, sometimes you can only get that from a still, but the video also offers like this. It, like, you see the nose puffing for air there. You see, you can feel the, the feet pumping on the ground, uh, just alerting to that, okay, there's possible danger here, even though I'm sitting down, and, uh, I could not get, if I running start, I would not even come close to catching a tear, so, uh, certainly, I like, I, but this is where you get to watch a little bit more 
of the interaction, the tail flash. That, that's a warning thing for, you know, for any other deer when it's flipping it back and forth like that. And then, of course, the white tail gets its name for the white tail by flipping it up high when it's uh, running away and uh, from something they feel is uh, threatening. But uh, if you sit long enough and you, you don't move, you don't get up, sometimes the deer can just uh, go back to what they're doing. And this one started coming towards me again. I still wasn't sure what it was, uh, what I was doing. <laughs> uh, he thought it was a giant cyclops looking through my giant lens at this point, I would think. Uh, strange creatures seeing the marsh. You can let me know, though. Uh, do you think the videos help? Do you think the videos and the picture is too much of a duplication? Uh, certainly let me know on that. But that's, you know, the, the route I'm trying to go. I'm trying to bring you more and more, like, being there with me. Or you can imagine you are there. Because I don't think that part you can get with a still photo. But you can get the greatest uh, expressions and... Oh, some things with a still does, you just say, wow. It, you know, brings you to another level with an animal at times. Uh, I guess it's all a matter of what is happening in the video and what's happening. Now, this is great. I said last week, I believe, the Northern Harriers would arrive in August, and this is two days before August, so woohoo! Uh, I love the Northern Harriers. It's a female. Uh, the male uh, gray, they call them a gray ghost, and they do ghost. They just disappear. You cannot believe a bird that cruises like that can just disappear on you, and they do. But uh, very nice to see this uh, beautiful female northern harrier. And uh, looking forward to, hopefully, uh, they keep me uh, company this winter a little bit. Because other than the minx, which I, I've been, like, you get a whole 30 seconds with, with, uh, you know, you get a few smaller birds, uh, yellow rump wobblers sometimes hang around for a little part of the winter. Uh, sometimes I get the marsh wren. Uh, here's a willet. Uh, could be the last willet we see, uh, uh on my, uh, photos here for the, for the year. Because, uh, this willet here, I, I'm moving to my new part of the marsh, and there's not a lot of willets in that part of the marsh. There's just not a lot of willets at all, so, uh... The ospreys here, the adult females, they're going to be going soon. And then the males will follow. And I'll probably have a few young stragglers uh, hanging down. And maybe a few uh, that come from even more northern areas on their migration to where they need to get the... I'll miss them golden eyes. Uh, I, I know it's not... I still got a whole month, good month with these birds. But I get... Get sad. I get sad. I love these birds so much. I spend so much time with these birds. It's uh, it's been a thrill, an absolute thrill. Uh, and I, uh, egrets, great egrets. Oh, look at another one coming by. I mean, I'm so fortunate. I get egret flyovers every week, and I am never get tired of them. Never get tired of seeing them coming this towards me, flying by me, sometimes straight at me. Uh, these guys snuck in behind me. A nice flock of snowies here. Uh, they, they, they were, you know, they were rushing to where the comrades, uh, were starting to gather and put the bait fish up against the wall. And hopefully we'll be getting some of that action next week. Uh, there's a nice fly, we'll fly catcher on a nice dead tree in the thing there. I love the dead branches, you know. Live branches are good, but dead branches make cool perching places, so, uh. Nice little fly catcher there. Uh, they'll be going too. Uh, here's the common turn. Last week, I believe I had a least turn. Uh, with any bird, especially with the black like this, eider ducks are very difficult to get the eye. But tur turns somehow, you know, I guess they get enough white underneath where you can get the eye. And uh, this is what the excitement's about. This is it. This is what we're going for. This is the turns right now, but this, underneath the busting is striped bass. Striped bass busting on bait fish is one of the most exciting things. In the marsh and with all the birds, a frenzy between the comrades, the small gulls, the kittiwakes, and uh, the egrets. Like this snowy egret here picking up a nice little snack in the in the creek. Uh, this is where the fresh water enters the, the, the pond. So this is very, very uh, cool area. And you see how low the tide is. Uh, 
here, and the, the big, you see the green, green on the side. That the marsh grass is super high here. To even get my lens through and get a shot at this bird, and even attempt to videotape it, well, I'm just thrilled to death. I mean, and you see the little green flares and stuff. Uh, not, and I, I know how to do to clear that up. And I, you know what, I, I like to just show you as I'm looking through my windows, which are very cool. And this, this coming up is one of my funnest spots. I, this, this is the one of the things I love watching you guys do. Watch him shake his foot, trying to dig up the mud, and move something, move something in that mud. There he goes, the little dance of the foot, ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a ding a, and then a uh, just, just, just. Hopefully something comes out, and boom. There's so much stuff buried in the mud. If you would walk around them edges, uh, you would sink, a. Eh? <laughs> but if you would walk around them edges, you would see a ton of, ton of stuff in the mud. And uh, as we progress uh, a little bit towards the mouth, uh, uh, where it starts really headed out, that's a little cut channel that was there, and you can see the, 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 the green. And, and now, I mean, I could get a clear shot. That's one on the right, just picked up a nice little uh, little eel, I believe. Uh, uh, now, this is a snapping turtle that's almost in the middle of the screen. It's left 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 middle right now. It's going to move to, like, the third of the, the screen, that little black area there. It's a, you see the, the straight, long neck of this one. This one on the right knows it. That, that is snapping turtle, and so does that one know it. But uh, the snapping turtle, that's actually the back of the shell, and its head is facing, which would be the upper part of the video. So I guess you would let's say north. That's how I would call it, but uh, I don't know if a compass has that on a video, but I would call the bottom south. I would call the left side west and the right side east. Oh, see, see the head came up? See it right there? Oh, you can see the head come up with the shell. So, uh, I, I would think this is a pretty, uh, you know, if he was buried in the mud, it could be, get a little dangerous for snowies because, I mean, they do take uh, swan cygnets, which are good size sometimes, uh, ducks, you know, uh, snappers. This is the common snapping turtle we have in Massachusetts. We do not have the alligator snapping turtle, uh, which is the pride of the south, that's the... Uh, Largest freshwater turtle in the world, and uh, they are awesome, awesome. Uh, but uh, th this is a common snapping turtle, and then the, the egrets here are just damp doing their little thing. Now, watch the one on the, the, the one on the right side is the one to really keep your eye on here in this video, even though the snap is there on the left. Uh, this could have been one of them moments that uh, could have been crazy, one of them crazy things caught on film, as they say, caught on video, you know, the, the teasers that you get on the computer, well, it's no teaser, it's just a regular, regular day in my marsh, uh, this is super low tide, uh, and you can see how far the mud is, how, that's always covered water, and look, this, this one grabs an eel, so keep your eyes on the one on the right, like I said, and watch, watch what it, watch the fun it has, this is just, the dexterity of these animals is just unbelievable. Oh, he drops it, but quickly, look how quick, boom, right back on it. Probably had a little too much mud. No, eels do have a silky slime. And look, he dropped it again, and no, he caught it in mid -air. Look at that. Is that just, that's reflexes beyond anything that he, I could do. Well, maybe I could do some of it. I doubt it, though. It's a very, this is wicked awesome as they say in the area. Now, this is a flashback from an old picture just uh, showing some of the snowy action I've had with eels in the past. Very great. Now we're in the woods in the black and white wobbler. Oh, this is the, the thrill of it. And there's just a still. And I could have continued taking, getting a few good stills out of this. Better than that. But I decided to get a little risky and try to videotape him. And this is with a Nikon D780 shooting slow motion. Uh... On a monopod, which is a little little tricky uh, for me. Uh, it's just a straight monopod. I don't have a, a fluid head on it or nothing. This is as, uh, well, let's face it. I could use a, a little little more help in my video game. But uh, we're working on it. We're working on bringing you to life. Uh, black and white wobblers are not the most common wobblers. And uh, I haven't seen one since May. And I'm not, and I traveled this path. 
where I am every day since uh, that time of year. So uh, I have not seen a black and white guava. So I don't know if this is a, really was a resident bird in the woods or if it was... They're not loud like uh, your yellow wobblers and your common yellow throats and your blue wings. You don't really hear them. They're not a loud wobbler. Uh, and this is where, uh, as we end the video, video uh, we can uh, see this is what we're looking for. The striped bass uh, coming in, and it should be a phenomenal August. Thanks for tuning in. Please tune in next week. I think we're going to catch some great action.